We were all dating and having sex with each other, and then she was like, this seems like a great idea for a show. <laughs> and um, So Lisa's queen. I mean, she just, she's, 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 she's now, like bowed out. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, Lisa's yeah. the queen. She's right. amazing. And we love her. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Poker Central Podcast. Same intro My good every time. friend Brent Hanks Such here with routine. me once again. But I made even better friends this week because we yeah. have Randall Emmett and Tom Swartz here on the show. They are playing on Poker After Dark. We have Whales versus Wizards. They can they can qualify themselves into these categories. But we're going to get real deep here for a minute because you guys have uh, so much to talk about. First and foremost, Poker After Dark guys. I know you are about as excited as you can possibly be. I'm giddy right now. <laughs> I don't know if I'm terrified. I'm, it's, it's, it, I feel like a medley of emotions. Um, I'm rusty. The last time I played poker, I will give myself a shout out. Can I plug myself? Yes. Yeah, last time I played, second place. It was LAPC. I got second place in the Omaha High Low. It was a single day. Wow. Still, no, man. It, was it was a single great. day tournament, but field. still. So I'm, I got residual confidence from that, even though it was six months ago. Well, I don't think. I think you didn't play again because you just want to carry that forever. Yeah, I'm, I'm, like I, you might retire from I, the like game. Like Costanza, I should have went out on top. Would they give it away? The Remington. Trophies, yes. the horse yeah. and everything. Yeah, oh you my God, you had it. I, I got soft and I was delirious and I've been playing for 16 hours and I was he had like maybe 20 more chips from me and I just wow. was like, you know what? Let's just chop it. I you can't can believe you gave the trophy up. You would have to. I would give away I gave them, everything I could, to get was, the trophy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's bad. I mean, yeah. I was surprised we saw you at the Poker Masters because I was. Th I thought you were going to retire after winning back-to-back -back high rollers. I wanted yeah. to retire. I felt like it was my time because it's never going to happen again. But <laughs> I, I, I went back, and, and they only had a 10K, which is kind of like in my comfort zone. And I played the one 10K, and I got 13th in cash. And now it's like three for three. I'm on. I don't know, dude. I didn't want to come back today to play the sit and go because I'm just petrified. Like, what if I go four for four? I mean, who knows? I mean, I mean, a fish could find his way. <laughs> uh, anyway. Are you a whale or a wizard today? You know I'm a wizard. No, <laughs> I, I am the biggest whale on the planet. Yeah. And I love it, and it's great. It's uh, fun. Though. All right, Tom, I want to get real quick into yes. your poker yes, history a little bit, going. because when you walked in here, you are like, I'm a poker fan, I'm giddy, I'm excited. Yes. But give us some context on where that passion comes from. Okay, um, it all started back during the Royal Vegas days. You guys remember Royal Vegas poker? Yes, I do. 2004 <laughs> or five. Wow. I was playing back then at Florida State, go Knowles. And one of my first tournaments I played, I accidentally, um, I accidentally joined a fixed a fix limit tournament and ended up winning and I won $1,000. And I'll never <laughs> what forget. Year? It was like 2005, so four, like 2004. Four Gs right today. before Royal Blaine. Oh my God, I will never forget that feeling, <coughs> that high. I went into my roommate's room, I woke him up and I was just, I won a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars in college money. That's like, well, what? you're a legend. That's like a hundred grand. I yeah. felt like yeah. I was on top of the world. And, you know, ever since then, I just, I was hooked immediately. Cash games, tournaments, everything? Okay, I love tournaments, love <laughs> sit and goes. Yeah. Cash games are not my specialty. Um, Do you fuck around online? Play a little poker? I love there? online poker. Yeah. I still yeah. like leaving his house. I Total mean, degenerates. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 many yeah. times I've called him to go yeah. to the tournament, I'll pick you up, I'll take 50% of your buy in. He's like, uh, I kept, I, uh, he likes hitting the button, he likes <laughs> yeah. not talking to anybody. I'm so much more confident. In, in the comfort of my own home in my pajamas, with the screen there. <laughs> yes. I, like, I, you know, like triple barrel bluffs and stuff live, yeah. it's hard for me to do. It's, I got this Minnesota nice thing in me. I almost <laughs> feel guilty when I'm at the poker table. I feel guilty taking people's money at the poker table. Cash You're games. too nice. I know. Yeah, You're nice. the nice one That's from Vanderpump. Today. He's my nicest friend I have. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have all assholes like myself. He is like the nicest human. All right, ten, right ten, 10 heads up matches against Randall. How many can you win? Oh, he gets killed. I think I could take at least 40%. You're out of your mind. No, come on. Sounds I'll lay like two we have a challenge. This, this is I'll challenge. lay two yeah, to yeah, one. Yeah. I'm make that I'll lay two to one. <laughs> okay. I'll lay two to one. Bet. Can we line that up? Done. Yeah. 10 heads up matches between Randall and Thomas. Okay, Thomas. so we're going to do that. That needs to happen. No yeah. Chance. We're going to see how this plays out. Um, Randall, you've been, you, you've been in the media and in the news <laughs> so much lately. Unfortunately. And, it, and, and I'm, I'm not talking about him winning high rollers. No. I'm talking it's about. Something fucked up. No, uh, in this case, it's something good. Oh. Oh, it's three, for three hours. <laughs> it's three hours. <laughs> for the whole year. I'm, I'm batting 11. I'm batting 11 months bad. Nothing but upside. Yeah. Yeah. Only upside. Yeah, I mean, it's on. three hours and 40 minutes of pure bliss yes. on, on Netflix right yeah. now. Thank you. The Irishman. Yes. Tremendous movie. Yes. I have to say, I'm treating it like a, sh a Netflix show. It's a three hour movie. It's really long. So I've watched half of it. So I can't really say speak on the end of it, but I love it already. Brent is a big fan. He talks about it oh every day. Oh my God! We binge. -watch. My wife and I watched it straight through. Took the kids over to the in-laws. I think I told you this. Yeah. Got a couple bottles of you wine. Got the wine. Got the whole thing set the, up. That's the best part uh, of Netflix. It's like, where did you ever foresee 20 years ago 
watching the greatest filmmaker of all time and a film in your own home. Yeah. I mean, and obviously there's something, going to the theater is the most amazing thing, but if you couldn't do it, you have kids, you're busy, there's right. a small window, then sit at home, enjoy the wine, enjoy the experience. But it has been a magical moment. I, I will say that I am I'm, um, flabbergasted that I got to be part of it. And this ride has already been magical in every way. And now we're in award season. You know, today we won uh, Best Picture for National Board of Review, which thank God is, a, is epic. And next Monday is Globes nominations. And look, who knows? I don't control the stars do, but it really is, you know, you work 25 years in this business. You, I made over 100 movies. I've never had a film feel like this, look like this, and, uh, and, and have the energy and the, 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 the momentum. Right, so so what I want to know, because you've been talking a lot about how great this movie is yeah. and working with all these For people. For like a year to you guys. Right, and it's been yeah, like yeah. overwhelming, and now that I can finally watch it, it's amazing. <laughs> but what I want to know is take us to those moments on the set where you see this being made and yeah. you're realizing in the moment, this is going to be great. What's that like, and, and what do you see when you're there? Uh, well, I, we shot in New York mostly, in, in the city and upstate, and so when I would fly in, the thing that was very different about this movie is the scale, the scope. I mean, forget that the budget is large, the time is long, but uh, you'd walk on set and let's say if I was shooting, I'm gonna take one example. If I was shooting a block in Manhattan, you know, my budgets usually are one block deep. You know, you have a few cars on the corner, a few extras. You'd walk on Marty's set and it would be 20 blocks lit, a hundred period cars and over a thousand extras. And I walked down, I'm like, this is unbelievable. So the scope and the level of cast that he made every single role, and you see Kaitel and Pesci and Ray Romano and you name it, actor after actor after actor, that's what makes Martin Scorsese an epic. So for me, when I was on set, that experience of watching, I was basically a, a spectator. I felt like I was a, I paid admission, I got on the set, I sat in my chair like a child, and there's Marty walking <laughs> around, and I'm like, uh, let me get my lollipop, and I'm walking in. I mean, it was like, it's like being a kid, you can't believe after you worked your whole career to have this moment. So for me, I was a spectator. Obviously, I got to be involved, but Marty is, you know, he's the king, and, and the way he shoots movies, the detail, the scope. I mean, every building had lights on top of them, 10 blocks down, I, I mean, it was crazy. So I, I knew that we were doing something really magical, and then take us to, to now, when I saw the first cut of the movie, I was very lucky that I had gotten asked to go to New York with the other producers. We sat down, you never know what you're gonna get. You know, you never, you can, it could feel great, it could feel perfect, and then you get garbage, you know, and uh, you know, with my movies in the past, some of them are not so great. Um, <laughs> but you know, you have an insurance policy in Marty, and you sit down, the lights go down, and 15 minutes in, I was like, this is the greatest movie I've ever gonna make, ever. I said it to my, my producer partner, I said, George, this is life changing. And when we got to the end of the movie, I said, I will never be able to top this movie. Wow. So. How much changes from that first cut you watch to the final Not product? Not many. Not much? No. He, Marty's done a lot of tweaking and polishing and, 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 and tightening, because that's what he does. And he does it all the way up until basically like the last day, because he's a perfectionist and his editor, Thelma, who's been with him for 30 years. But um, for me, I, I, there were some tightening and changes, but you don't see, it's not like big, it's not right. grand. So, yeah, it, it was it was like a finished um, a finished product. Right. Uh, the first the first cut I saw. Any sort of uh, projects that you can hint at that you might be involved with right now? Any anything else with Scorsese? Uh, I hope to be involved with more stuff next year. I can't okay. say yet if that's happening. We're discussing. There are a lot of discussions. Uh, um, <clears throat> uh, what am I doing next year? Uh, we have a TV show with Arnold Schwarzenegger called Pump, based on the uh, Pumping Iron documentary. With Arnold? Pump, yes. Yeah. He's uh, back? Based on, based on the documentary <laughs> and the explosion of fitness what? in Venice Beach, how there used to only be one gym in Southern California and how you know the gym wasn't something that you talk about when you go to lunch, count calories, all that. Back in the day, these guys were looked at as you know outcasts. And freaks. Freaks. And, and then it became a multi-billion dollar business. So that's kind of the beginning of the evolution. Wow. Joe Weider, Joe Weider and, and et cetera. So a, that's an exciting series. Wow. Tom has been quiet on the corner here for yeah, quite a while. Yeah, yeah. But you, Honestly, have, you have so much stuff going on as well, and you must be getting tired of Ram no, talking about the no, Irishman. No, 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 no. I just say it's surreal to be sitting here, and it's, honor, it's an honor to be sitting here with you riding that wave, because I know you've worked so hard your whole career, Thanks, to buddy. be riding the wave, not with you, but to be no, in your you're, orbit you're while you're experiencing yeah. something like that. I, can't, I mean, I got to, he invited me to do the premiere, and sitting up there watching Scorsese introduce Pacino, De Niro, Cartel, yeah. like 
my mind was blown. Like Casino is probably my favorite movie of all oh, time. So fucking oh, good. So and like, it's just, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Oh, uh, my hair's fun. standing up. Um, anyway, so yeah, no, we don't have to talk kind. about me. No, no but I, yeah, no, but he's, he's very, so like, humble. very good friend. No, 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 no. They've no. all been, <laughs> listen, they've all been supportive. You know, I've had movies come out that obviously didn't work, and that's part of life. And you know what? They didn't change their tune. They just said, hey, you know what? We're still behind you, and that's what good friends are. And now I have a movie that is working, and they're the same. And that's what makes, you know, yeah. they have a really good friend. However, rumor has it, you guys are sort of working <laughs> together here. All right, now I'm leaving. Uh, now I'm leaving. Tom, can you fill us in? I gotta go. I, 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 know, I gotta go. Too. I know, there's, I, this is, this is schadenfreude. I'm taking great pleasure in seeing him get sucked into this world, because he <laughs> vowed. <laughs> And he swore that, you know, he likes to stay behind the scenes. He's a producer, he does his thing. And he got thrust into the spotlight. Yeah. And I feel like you handled it really well in your defense, to be honest, you did. It was tough. A lot of thrusting, huh? (laughs) I'm just gonna say this, I'm gonna say this. You know, know, I watch reality like everybody else. And, you know, my fiance's on the show and I'm friends with all these guys and I don't go to work with them, so I don't know what's required in the production. You know, I know how to make a movie. It is a tough job. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. They wake up, their whole life is on camera. When they have an argument with somebody or their loved one, and they want to like hide in their house for three days, no they have to go to a the lunch rug. the next day oh, yeah. and talk about it. Right. Yeah. So these guys, and it's four months straight of filming morning to night, no break. I mean, it's it's not easy. It's and like, I give you guys a lot of credit. Thank you, Randall. You know, I know you don't. I know yes. you, it, you, you. You play it down, but it, it is. Exo- I did one or I, I filmed once a week, let's say, right, and and. After that day, I'd be exhausted. I want to go home and hide. And they got to get up and do it every day. So yeah. I give them a lot of props. That's the thing. I'm, I'm very grateful. But it does drain you in a very particular way. That's hard to articulate unless you've actually been a part of it. Like dissecting your relationships on like a cellular level on a regular basis, you know, practicing like radical honesty, shit's exhausting. Right. It's exa- It can be rewarding and it's therapeutic exhausting. too. You know, you get everything out there. But can you imagine, like, imagine having, like, some of your worst fights with your significant other, having to me, talk about that. Between me and Brent, you Yes. <laughs> uh, I can't yes. even fathom. So you and just, Katie, I mean, that must be sort of brutal. Uh, who, who handles it better, you or her? That's a good question. I'm really good at compartmentalizing. <laughs> um, I, I think overall, I would have to say I do, right? Yeah. You're going to be in I'm trouble I'm less emotional. That. I'm yeah, stolid. Yeah. I think a woman, you know, or at least our women, yeah. are... They're very strong and they're very opinionated. So I think we've learned, at least I've learned, I think Tom has led the way because he's married already <laughs> and had a successful relationship. But he, um, I, I, I've learned to just back down and shut up. Right. It's just, as much as I know I'm right 99% of the time, I have to be a strong man yeah. and just know that I'm right in my head, but I cannot win. Do you get in you trouble uh, on the I, show coming up on the next season? Oh. Well, Tom. I mean, no, no, no. I, I mean, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, Tom for sure does, but do you? I, I don't get in trouble. I, there is an incident that will be shown on the show where Tom was supposed to remind me of something, uh-huh. a time specifically yeah. at something, and he forgot because that's Tom. And I, I'm the idiot that would go to Schwartz yeah. so to remind me of anything. Tom's fault that you didn't remember. Okay, yeah. Right. So he didn't remember. It. So Wait. then I got reamed by my girl, and it's a whole thing. So that, it'll be on the show. It's funny, I'm sure. But it wasn't funny at the time when Lala comes in and... And, and the wedding was on the line. There were things on the line. There were things on the line. Yeah. That's good. That's good yeah. to know. I want to say, yeah. but it, 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 people will get a kick out of it, right. I'm sure. January yeah. 7. Yes. New season. season Vanderbilt Rules. Oh, my God. Season, season 8. eight. Whoa. It's, it's going to be Whoa. insane. Whoa. Whoa. For, the poker, for the poker fans, though, yeah. what should they expect of this? Because they're going to get to know you now on yeah. Poker After Dark. They're going to see a side of you that's going to be maybe a little bit different from the reality TV, Tom. I'm cool. You're scaring me, man. So oh give, me, give me something. I'm getting scared again. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, in my opinion, poker is the greatest <laughs> reality show of all time. I it's agree. It's the best drama. I've experienced every single emotion on the spectrum at the poker table. <laughs> so great. I love it so much. When I watch it, every single time I watch you guys show, I'm getting up, I'm walking around, I'm pacing, because I'm living vicariously through these guys. Yeah, that being you, said- He watches religiously. That being said, our show's pretty fucking good too. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> it's pretty fucking good. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons it is so good is because we've all known each other a really long time and yeah. we weren't cast on the show. And like we said, we're all a derivative of the housewives. We're a derivative in particular of the housewives of Beverly Hills, and we all work for Lisa Vanderpump, and yada, yada, yada. We were all dating and having sex with each other, and then she was like, 
this seems like a great idea for a show. <laughs> and um, so Lisa's queen. I mean, she <laughs> just, she's, 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 she's oh, now, like bow down. To yeah, me. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Lisa's yeah. the queen. She's right. amazing, and we love her. And um, actually, we just opened. Well, we just had our one year anniversary, but we opened a bar with her, myself and Tom Sandoval, who was also on the show. Um, it's called Tom Tom. Shout out Tom Tom. Shout out. I appreciate Shout that. Out. We're expanding. It should be open in, in about a month. And it's going to be really, really cool. I would love to take it. Like can, can we even get yes, in? Can we even get in? Can we even get in? Yes, you guys are VIP oh, for you life. You guys bypass that yeah. line. Oh, we can, oh, yeah. You're VIP. Yes. Come, yes. Come. yes. Um, I will black out in there and never be <laughs> out. Yes. Yeah. I would be honored to join you on this. Lisa! <laughs> I'm just going to be screaming for her. Um, but yes, anyways, it's it's been a really surreal journey. I don't know how I ended up on reality TV. I sure as hell never imagined myself on reality <laughs> TV. It's not something you can really aspire to. It's sort of just fell into my lap, and I'm so grateful Tom, it did. Tom, look at you. What? You're you're like Brad Pitt, man. <laughs> Come like, on. You were made for this Come shit. on. Look at this. Ramco, uh, Ramco, Randall, look at this guy. Let me take a sip of my avocado. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah exactly. That. Yeah. Oh, I've changed. Yeah. <laughs> I've changed. So um, tell, me, tell me about what it takes to step away from filming once the season is done and to live a normal life again, because I can only imagine you might have some PTSD yes. from being under pressure for four months of the year. Yes, but the thing is, we don't stop hanging out. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're like family, for better or for worse, sometimes to a fault. You know, when the cameras stop, we don't just stop hanging out, texting each other, calling each other. These are my closest friends in LA, my family. Work. And Work. we probably spend a little too much time together, honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, you compartmentalize it. And, I don't know, sometimes it can be soul-sucking. But for the most part, <laughs> it's very rewarding, and I'm super, super grateful to be on the show. But, but it's also giving you, I mean, so much, so much a big life. You so, know? Oh, my God, and no, so I'm so, I'm eternally grateful for it. Yeah. But at any given moment, it's sometimes it's, when you're in the trenches, it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, you know what I mean? For um, sure. So but, there's been times where you just... You want to end it. You're yes, done. yes, everything. You fuck this. I'm yes, out. first yeah. of all, hundred percent. Yeah, but um, that that blows over quick. Right, <laughs> it, it does. does. Basically, wake up the next day, you're like, okay, exactly. Get back out. Yeah, it. drinking helps. I know you want to look like Tom, but you yeah. at least need to take the tag off your shirt here, Remco. See, this is how serious I, mean, I take my job. <laughs> I, I hear Randall and Tom Swartz are coming into the studio. I'm buying a new shirt. <laughs> That's how serious I am about this. Um, Tom, I, I also want to know yeah. from you. Dealing with the fans and all yeah. the people that love your show, that's year round. Yeah, that's the best part. It is. I know it sounds like that's, it's that's the crazy. best part. Honestly, it's one of the best parts. We get, because like with us, people have kind of grown with us. They've, they've watched us, I'd like to think they've watched us evolve. My well, wife is one of them, she knows all of you. Oh, oh really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Evolve and devolve. Um, I like to say it's like, you know, two steps forward, one step back. But they've grown with us, and I feel like there's an instant connection there. So when I see people out, it's like, you know, there's no small talk. It's like an instant bond. We have that history. It's almost like they're friends. They're longtime friends, and uh, yeah, I love connecting with people. Like in the bar, I think that's one of my specialties. If I have any specialties, connecting with We're people. We're going to find out if you have any poker specialties. Oh, God, I'm scared. I can't wait. That's, <laughs> that, that's going to be Gloves tremendous, too, out, because baby. you hinted at, and Randall then forcefully yelled at you saying, yes, you are, when you said, I might play the World Series of Poker. <sighs> It's is been it, a dream of is mine it happening? for 15 years. Never I've had the opportunity. Because he's always filming. Yes. Right. Um, so this and you're is... A, and you're a nit, is what I've heard. He no, 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 no. You're a nit. I'm not a nit. You're I'm... the biggest nit. No, 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 well, no. Well, the fans no. will see. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm not a nit. Now you're going you're gonna to get in his head, Randall. Well, now he's going to play like an asshole. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. you call him I'm a looking at the lineup, and I'm like, Kitty, I'm going to Don't let him get to you. I'm going to crush Kitty. I'm going to crush Tom. I'm going to crush everybody. And Ali, I'm going to bury him today. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. gonna bury Ali. All right, enough, Ali. It's boring. And if he, you know what Ali's jinx is? You know why he never wins anymore? You know he's got second. You know why? Every time he gets to a final day, he posts his chip stack on Instagram. Every time. <laughs> and I text him like, this is the curse. Stop posting your chip stack. He posted Wait till you win and yeah. then post a picture. It's his curse. I found it. I thought I it's because he stopped wearing that uh, Dragon, Ball weird Dragon Ball Z yeah. hoodie or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, but he's been a lot of runners up. I know more about Vanderpump than I do Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> it's no joke. Absolutely. Um, he, he's going to come this summer. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. You're going to yeah. play? But you yeah. also said, which I thought was really surprising, but also kind of cool, yeah. is that you don't just play Hold'em. You're not a one-trick pony like Randall. Yeah. You play more <laughs> than you, just Rebecca. one game. Oh, thank you. Um, I, my favorite game is Omaha High Low. I love it so much. Um, limit or Pot Limit. But, yeah, and I also, yeah, Omaha. I'm decent at Omaha. 
respectable at least. Right. I know all the games. Like I can play horse, but um, I do. Randall seven. knows no games. He <laughs> just pretends. <laughs> no, I gotta give him credit. <laughs> actually, he like sort of. He's one of the people who revitalized <laughs> poker for me a little bit. Like I took a long break from it. Twitch, Twitch, you guys and Randall have like totally reinvigorated my You're love. You're back, baby. I, I go through streaks. I yeah. go through phases with poker. Right now, the love. It's sparked up again. I can feel it. I can feel it in my loins. I'm excited to yeah. be here. And I'm remembering why I loved it so much in the first place. Like, put me in, let's go. I All like right, this. I wanna hear one, one more thing from both you guys. Yeah. Randall, what is gonna be the thing that makes your 2019? Does it all hinge on the Irishman winning an Oscar? Or can you, can you find happiness outside of that? Because that's a big moment, you've okay. been talking about it. Two things have made my 2019. I'm gonna go into the new year. Plus, and that will be uh, a nomination. Right. That for me is enough. Like, yes, do I want to win? We all want to win. But to be nominated, it's, it, it's, it's, you grow up as a child, you watch the Oscars, you practice your speech in the bathroom, you say, oh my God, what, you know, who would I thank? What? So nominating, being nominated, be able to tell my children they have an Oscar nominated father, their dad was nominated for an Oscar, that's enough. And the other thing, and this is the truth, and I've said this, to all my friends, winning a high roller, first of all, cashing a high roller was a goal. Winning a high roller was a dream. Winning two high rollers, there's nothing else. I dropped the mic. There's nothing else to say. <laughs> That's it. It's over. So I still, I'm still I, mean, I, really mean that. I, jo I mean, I'm joking, but nobody, you know, it, it's weird. Because poker, there, and I'm going to say this with a lot of love and heart. Poker, there are moments where you're on a stage, people are there, it may be the World Series main event, or you're in the 5K, you get 10th, and it's a quiet, kind of uh, sad moment, but there's not really people around. And poker can have either of those moments. For me, being in this studio for so many years now, and the heartbreak you guys have seen, the texts I've sent you, the phone calls with Jungle or Schindler or Savrol crying like a little, <laughs> little bit baby. I had kings, I had all the chips. Why did you have aces? Like, I'm, I'm quitting. Uh, all that heartbreak that I've been through. That moment in this studio, it was me and uh, Winter, and it was me and Savarall heads up. There was uh, Paul, there was a couple dealers, there was a security guy, and the first one, tears in my eyes. And it, it, there was nobody else here. It didn't matter, though. I had proven to myself that I am capable. And, you know, I'm definitely not the most talented guy in the room, but if you put the hard work in, and, and it kind of, things go your way, and you make good choices, and you fight through the, the, the bad moments in a tournament and you know all the bad beats you've gotten, it can happen. And then the second one, I was kind of in shock. I, didn't, I, didn't, I couldn't really process that. So for me, winning two high rollers, that's it. I mean, right. what, what, I mean the elephant's off the back. Yeah. I went into Poker Masters, got 13th, cashed again. I'm like, you know, and it's like almost like, you know, people don't realize, you know, through my obnoxiousness and craziness that I love this game that I fight to train and coach in this game, that I spend hours at, like I'm in the office and we're talking about a deal and I'm on the phone with somebody in the other office getting a coaching session for an hour because that's how much I love the game and I know that as an amateur, we have no chance against pros unless we put some work in. Doesn't mean we're gonna beat them all the time, but hey, it can happen and if you do the work, you can come out on top here. Do you notice the, the ratio there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oscars, 2%, uh, poker, 98% yeah, of his life right there. Yeah. It's, Love that. It's, 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 Love listen, that. Yeah. When, when, when you're doing something that you're an amateur in and you're playing against the best in the world, right. there's no other game you can do this in. None. We always talk about that. To beat the, those guys in that room, those are my heroes. Right. Those are the guys that I watch and look up to. You know, Savarall, I mean, this is a wizard. I mean, he, he belongs in Harry Potter land, and somehow the dumbest guy in the room won. So, there so you go. Randall went for seven minutes. Tom, yeah. I would love to hear from you as yes. well. Yeah. No, no, aside, sorry. Aside, sorry. Aside, I gotta get out. No, I can't follow. Aside from Poker After Dark yeah. winning today, yeah. obviously gonna be the highlight of the year because yeah. I, have, I have confidence in you today. Thank yeah. you. So then, yeah, he's betting so then, on you. So I then love tell that. He's betting on you. He's good. So I'm all right. As we're in December, I also want to know your highlight of the year. Because you yeah. know, obviously this guy has a yes. lot of stuff going on. You have to. Yes. Well, having we just had our one year anniversary at the bar. That was a big moment for me. Because honestly, I always thought I would have a bar. I thought it, eventually down the road. And then we ended up opening a magical, beautiful bar with Lisa Vanderpump and Ked Todd in the heart of West Hollywood. Restaurant <laughs> and bar. It's, Restaurant it's bar. It's this beautiful, industrial, chic. Just it's an experience in there, you know. Yeah. 
I can't wait to take you guys back. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. This make this being a part of that has been very fulfilling. Having some more structure in my life. And you built it from the ground up. You designed it, everything with me. I mean, it's it's yeah. spectacular. Oh, it's really yeah, I feel like I've grown professionally a lot this year. And I'm really excited about the expansion and uh you know, we're starting and to talk about season. kids. And talking about, oh, oh yeah. yes. Oh, me, and, yeah. me and the wife here are talking kids. It's kid time. I'm excited about that. Beautiful. I Beautiful. love kids. I'm good with the dogs for now, but I love kids. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just I, stoked to be here. I'm, I, I'm really happy he's here because he loves poker. People don't realize that he's, he's obsessed. Yeah. So for him to come on poker, I'm drunk. He's so excited when I call yes. him. Yes. I, I, it's going to be fun. All right. Thank you guys so much for being on the show. Thank you, Tom guys. Yeah, let's Red do it. Lemon, Brittany, stay tuned for more Poker After yes. Dark, and also Thanks. stay tuned for more action from Poker Central Podcast right here.